Moses sat in Aaron's home. He was alone for the moment, and there was light in the home, and there was peace. But Moses wondered what was happening in the house of Pharaoh and all of the Egyptian homes. Moses' mind went back to the moment when God's voice came to him and said, Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness which may even be felt. At the recent memory of the ninth plague that God had sent upon the hard-hearted leader of all of Egypt, Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and the warm glow of the candle lights flickered off his arm and hand. Instantly, I am had brought utter and thick darkness through the whole land of Egypt, the darkness so thick no person could see to walk from their home to the wells so much as for water or bring their animals in from the outside for three days. Egypt has been in the most awful darkness, Moses thought, a darkness that can be felt. But my people, my people have a light. This plague, the ninth plague of darkness, went directly to one of the most revered gods in all of Egypt. Ra was a god that was well worshipped. The Egyptians believed that Ra raised the sun in the daytime and moved it back out of sight for the night. But this plague came and took away the status of Ra and it came with no warning. For God did not tell Moses to let Pharaoh know ahead of time with this plague. And God alone was in control. The darkness was supernatural. It was frightening. You see, God's presence provides the light. The Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. Well, God removed his light, and this darkness was not yet black. It wasn't just black to the point where you couldn't see your hand before your face, but it felt unearthly. It felt terrifying. It was supernatural, and God did not permit the candles or lanterns the Egyptians used for evening, night, and nighttime to work. They simply did not light astounding. This was a dramatic take that to the man-made sun god Ra. Almighty I am took away the foolish man-made story that Ra moved the sun in the morning and then in the evening. Remember in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and God said it was good and the evening and the morning were the first day. And this would have been something the Israelites would have immediately understood with this plague. The intent that God is saying is I am the only God and there is no other. The Bible doesn't speak about the other things that probably happened. I'm sure that when that darkness hit with no warning, there was tragedy. I'm sure there were uh, people on horses that were suddenly thrown and trampled in the melee. I'm sure there was such a mess that it wasn't funny. It wasn't like God took the light during, during the dark time. He took the light when it was light and there was instant chaos and confusion. And once again, Pharaoh's sorry for about five minutes, but then his heart gets hard and his arrogance does not permit him to humble himself before the God of the children of Israel. Now it's interesting to note that God put the darkness on them and then God removed the darkness in three days. This time you don't see Pharaoh asking, after all, how could he? Moses could have got to him, but Moses wasn't knocking himself out, but Pharaoh couldn't send anybody. They couldn't see. The entire land of Egypt, except for Goshen, was total blackness. This man was powerless, like he had never been before. He was like a feeble, elderly person who has fallen to the ground without aid of another to help them and no means to let someone know they have fallen. Yet, in spite of this man's helplessness, he says these words to Moses. All right, go, serve the Lord. But your flocks and your herds, they're staying here. But you can take your little ones with you. And Moses says, you must give us sacrifices and burn offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God, and even we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. And Pharaoh says, get away from me. He's screaming at Moses. Take heed to yourself. See my face no more. In the day you see my face, you will die. And Moses said, you have spoken well. I will never see your face again. I love the one liner Moses makes too. Our livestock will go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. That would be a great marketing campaign for the right company. Pharaoh screams at Moses again, get away from me. You're never going to see my face again. And Moses says, you've spoken well. Now it's not good news that he's never going to see Moses's face again. 
And when you read the Bible, the chapter ends here, and then there's a new chapter put in by the people that put the chapters together. When in actuality, this is all one passage. It's one continuous conversation beside uh, with Pharaoh and Moses. Pharaoh is angry, and beside himself, Moses is cool as a cucumber up to a point. And God has already given Moses idea what the last plague is. And Moses delivers it with this low. He says, thus says the Lord, about midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the hand mill and all the firstborn of the animals. Then there shall be a cry throughout all the land of Egypt such as what is not before nor shall be like it again. But against none of the children of Israel shall a dog so much as lick its tongue Against man or beast, it shall not happen to the children of Israel, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And all these your servants shall come to me, and they will bow down to me, saying, Get out, and all the people who follow you. After that, I will go out. And Moses goes out from Pharaoh in a great anger. I take this passage this way. I think at first Moses was trying to contain his anger. He was trying to deliver the news from God without losing his temper. I know when we lose our temper, we often lose the intent that we're trying to say. But Moses leaves furious. He goes out hot. And I think it's because he could not grasp why this man had allowed so much heartache and death to already come on Egypt. And Moses knew that even the man that stood before him or sat before him in his chair that very night was going to lose his firstborn son. And he was furious because Moses knew that Pharaoh could have stopped this early on before God was hardening his heart. But Pharaoh would not. And Moses is done. God is done. And now the worst plague to ever come to Egypt is about ready to launch. Now, there's some information that Moses left out in his words to Pharaoh because God had told the prophet this. Moses, when he lets you go, he will drive you out altogether. So speak now in the hearing of the people. Let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And you know what? I bet that made Pharaoh nuts. Did Moses recognize the incredible and deadly irony in what was about to come? I believe he did. The Pharaoh before the one that Moses was standing before is the one that had the decree to have all the babies 80 years prior when Moses was just an infant, all the baby boys drowned in the Nile. And then of course, Moses' parents for his safety floated him down the Nile. And then, of course, God turned the Nile to blood. And now God was going to bring a flood of his own, a dark Nile, if you would, a darkness, this, a, an angel of death. And he was going to bring that throughout the entire land that everyone that did not have the blood on the, on the top and the sides of their doors, that firstborn of that house would die. And that's the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, for Pharaoh. The death of the firstborn, which will directly hit the Egyptian goddess of birth and reproduction. Her name was Heget, because she was not real. But our God, the Lord God Almighty, is El Shaddai.